In terms of numbers, Christianity is the biggest religion in the world. About 32% of the world's population would say that they're Christian. You can see on this chart that the second biggest religion is Islam. And you can see that both of these are significantly bigger than their competitors. An interesting question is, why has Christianity been so successful? And you could ask the same thing about Islam. I'm not going to pretend to give you a complete answer here, but perhaps part of the answer is that both religions for their entire existence have been missionary religions. That is, they've been movements that say that they're intended for all of humanity, and they actively seek people to join the religion. Christianity and Islam never settled down into being ethnic religions. That is, roughly, a religious movement that's content to be the movement just of one people group, of one nation or tribe. Here's another interesting chart. This doesn't cover the world's whole population. It's just treating religious groups in absolute numbers, that is, by the millions. The interesting thing about this chart is that you can compare different varieties of Christianity, which are all in different shades of green here, with other entire religions. You can see, then, that there are more Roman Catholics than there are Hindus. There are more Protestants than there are Hindus, at least if you count all of these broadly as Protestant. You can see that there are almost as many Catholics as Muslims. And Christianity, although it's often thought of as a, quote, Western religion, is in recent times truly a world religion. Look at how its millions are distributed across the globe. According to the Pew Research Center's Forum on Religion and Public Life, Global Religious Landscape, put out in December 2012, in North America, there are 267 million Christians. And in Latin America and the Caribbean, there are 531 million. In Europe, there are 558 million. In Sub-Saharan Africa, there are 517 million. In the Middle East and North Africa, there are 13 million. And in Asia and the Pacific, there are 287 million. Now this is interesting. Christianity is often thought of as sort of a white people's religion. If by white people we mean white North Americans and their European countries of origin, well then we'd have less than 800 million Christians. But look how many other Christians we have. Right, more than a billion here. Another almost 300 million here. Look how things split up north-south. Again, if you consider the Western Hemisphere, there's more in the south. If you look here at Europe versus Africa, things are fairly equal. And then there are a great many Christians in South Asia. Of course, some of that 287 is in the rest of Asia up here. So it's all over the place. It's not confined to any one country, any one people group, or any one region of the globe. One other noticeable thing about this chart is this low number right here in the middle. You might wonder why this is so, because this includes the land where Jesus walked, Israel. And early on, these were Christian areas. So why are there only 13 million Christians in that region now? The answer is Islam. Islam took over that area in the Middle Ages. But that's a story for a later date. Now why all this talk of size? Why does size matter? It matters in a couple of ways. One way it matters is influence. Because it's so big, Christianity has had a large influence on the history of the world, on many cultures, past and present. Another reason is this. Christianity, in many circles, is viewed as dominant and dominating. And because of this, it attracts conspiracy theories like no other religion. Christianity is the America of world religions. Just as America is viewed in many parts of the world as controlling everything behind the scenes and, you know, the CIA is behind all of your country's problems, and surely America staged and faked the 9-11 attacks on itself just so it would have an excuse to invade other countries. Just as those kind of ideas get going, people love to form conspiracy theories about Christianity. And let's face it, the Roman Catholic Church is a big organization led by one person which has been uniquely influential and has a long history. It's just so tempting a target. I say this to warn you. Part of being an educated person is knowing what kind of things to spend your time on and what kind of things are time wasters. Don't get me wrong, human foolishness and stupidity are very interesting, and I've looked into some of these. But I can tell you there's really no evidence that would support that Jesus was married, that Jesus went to India, or any of the nonsense in Dan Brown's novel, The Da Vinci Code, and the movie by that name. It's also not true that Christianity was just cut and pasted from Egyptian religion. And one could go on and on with these. And though it could be fun in spots, 
it would be a waste of your time because you wouldn't be learning what Christians have actually believed and practiced. And you wouldn't be learning even what historians say about Christianity and the development of the Christian tradition over time. In our next segment, the founder of the Christian tradition.